Hey guys, Dennis here with you again. Thanks for being a part of this video. Today we're talking about starving your health anxiety. Now, I got this term from one of my uh, clients who I do one-on-ones with online and he was talking about how he was starving his anxiety, how he was starving his symptoms, how he was starving his fears. And I, I truly fell in love with the idea of starving your health anxiety and not feeding it and kind of doing things in order to, you know, have it buzz around your face and basically be a fly in your face and not this huge monster. So I truly love the idea of starving your health anxiety and that's what I'm going to talk about with you today and give you some valuable, powerful tips and suggestions and relative stories that you can apply to your life. Now, I want to talk about this idea, guys, of what we call an NLP is a camera check of perceptions. Now, a camera check of perceptions is something that I used with incredible benefits back in my health anxiety days. Now, what is it? Think about yourself in a situation, okay? In an anxious situation, some, you know, you're at the grocery store or you're taking a walk or you're talking to that coworker, whatever it is that brings up that anxiety. Now, think about that and think about it in terms of what another person would think in that situation. So you have you, okay, talking to somebody, then you have another person behind you kind of going, you know what, what's going on, how is his thoughts, you know, what is his behavior right now? So you're seeing the situation from another person's perspective, basically, okay? And this can be, for me, what I did was I used my my former self, my past self, this person who was anxiety free, this person who had all the freedom in the world, this person who was fearless, and I, I brought that person into life. And I said, you know what? What would that person think of my internal processes? What would that person think of my behaviors right now? What would they say to me, right? So when you take yourself out of a situation, when you take yourself out of that event, that anxious event, and you put your perspective of that event from another person's point of view, it's very, very powerful, okay? And, and this could go with symptoms too, right? Like with health anxiety, when you're, um, when you're going through your day and all of a sudden out of the blue, right, which is really not the case, there's always a chain of events that lead to a panic attack or anxiety, but out of the blue, um, anxiety happens. And when it happens, you go, you know what? I see my reaction. I, I understand the thoughts that are going through my mind right now. And, and I'm questioning my beliefs right now. Now, what would that person from back in the day think about what I'm thinking? What would they think about the, the behaviors I'm taking right now? What would they think, right? So see it from another person's point of view. Okay, take yourself out of the situation and, and put someone else in that situation behind you and see what they would say. Now, I also want to talk about feelings, all right, our feelings. Um, I want you guys to get really good at this, okay? This is powerful. Make a habit out of questioning your emotions, okay? And there's something called emotional reasoning, okay, in NLP. And emotional reasoning means that when you have an emotion, when you have a feeling, a lot of us think that a feeling is an actual fact, when in fact, it's not a fact. It's just an emotion. It's a feeling. It's a, a signal from your subconscious mind that there's something you need to deal with. And that's what it's all, it's all about. When you get an emotion, when you get a feeling, I want you guys to question what it is, where it's coming from, what is the root. And when I work with people one-on-one -on -one and through the program, basically, what we always talk about is not the symptom. People come up to me and go, Dennis, I've got this symptom, that symptom, I've got this situation. Guess what? None of that shit matters. None of it. We need to get to the root, right? The bottom of the Titanic, right? We need to get to the bottom of your subconscious mind. The 90% of your mind that you are basically trying to push away, you're trying to avoid. But guess what? It keeps 
coming back because you haven't dealt with it. You haven't dealt with that stuff from the past, your experiences. You haven't um, changed your thought processes, thought processes, your belief systems, your behaviors, right? And a lot of people would rather die than think. Thinking um, takes up too much time. It's too much pain. There's too much effort involved, right? So a lot of people would say, you know what? I'm okay right now in this situation. I don't want to make it worse. So let's just keep things the way they are because at least I'll know what to expect. That, my friends, is a horrible, horrible place to be, right? Being in your comfort zone, living in a world of fear, living in a world of what if thinking, living in a world of coping methods is just such a, a handcuffing way to live life. And I don't like it and you shouldn't either. Um, the other thing I want you guys to truly understand is this idea of problems, right? A lot of people go through their lives and, and dealing with health anxiety and go, you know what, I have all these problems in my life, right? But things started to change in my life when I started to look at problems as challenges. Now think about that for a second. Now take an area of your life where you have a problem, right? Take that problem and now mold it, right? Change it up so now it's a challenge, right? Just think about those two words for a second. Problem, challenge. Look at how your mind interprets both. A problem is something that feels out of your control. A problem is something that you fear, um, fear continuously. A challenge is something that you have control over, something you have the ability to change, right? So think about your life right now. Think about an area of your life where you're really happy with, right? Your leisure time, your career, your relationships, this, whatever it may be, um, your family life. Um, think about that area and think about all the challenges that you've accepted and you've looked fear in the eye and you've found ways to solve those challenges, right? So guys, I want you to understand that problems are a part of life. Problems are a part of life. Health anxiety right now, your symptoms are a part of your life. They are temporary. They are a, a, a current chapter in your life right now, right? I get it. I get how debilitating it is. I understand so fully when I see people, when I work with people, I see this power within them. I truly do. I, I'm like listening to them and, and they're going about their story and they're talking about their identity right now and how they're a victim and such. But deep down in every health anxiety suffers life, deep within their eyes and in their soul, there is so much power. There truly is. There's so much knowledge. And a lot of times in this world, it's almost like the quiet ones, the people that are shy and quiet and don't really speak up are the most intelligent. And nothing is ever good or bad or real or not real. It's all about perception. It, all, it is all about your perception, how you view something. And the way I view things right now is that health anxiety sufferers are, are some of the most powerful people on this planet. Why? Because health anxiety and panic attacks are the closest thing you can get to being, to, 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 to those moments of just before being dead, death, right? And it's as close as you're going to get. And guess what? Some people, as myself for six, seven years almost, um, deal with this on a daily basis, right? And how many people out there can do what you're doing? Not many. And that's why I say to all the people I work with through health anxiety um, online that when you overcome health anxiety, when you overcome an anxiety disorder naturally, there is nothing else on this planet that can stop you from achieving anything you want in your life. I truly understand that. And, and, and I've seen it. I've seen it over and over again. People like myself have overcome health anxiety, right? 
Then they're faced with another challenge in their lives and they look at it as this little tiny thing. They're like, oh my God, what is that compared to what I was dealing with in the past? Nothing, right? So understand the opportunity that you have right now in your hands by listening to the podcast, by implementing the stuff in the Anxiety Guy videos that you're listening to right now, by joining Facebook and being a part of that community. You are challenging your thoughts. You are challenging the direction your life is currently going and you're going, you know what? No more. I've gotten to the point of what I like to call no return, not another day. Things need to change. They don't change automatically. I need to change them. Is it possible? Yes. How do I know? Other people have done it over and over and over again. If I showed you guys my email list, um, the emails I get on a daily basis, you would be like, wow, all I see or you see right now are the, the wanderers in the world, the health anxiety sufferers that don't know what to do, don't know what direction to go, confused, frustrated, annoyed, sick and tired of life. That's what you see. But what I see on a daily basis is miracle stories, success stories, people that are looking fear in the eyes and going, you know what, here's the root of the problem and that's what I need to deal with. And taking that mindset and a, and a proven strategy in order to get there. That's what I see. And it wasn't until I started to see those success stories that I started to believe that recovery was possible. When you're hanging around forums all day, is recovery possible? No. When you're talking to that shitty friend that you have that constantly whines about life, is recovery possible? No. When you're talking to your mother on a daily basis and your mom's going, everything's going to be okay. Just learn to relax. I'm, everything's going to be all right. Is recovery possible? No, it's not. It's when you start to see the role models, when you start to see the mentors, when you start to see the success stories that recovery is actually possible and within your reach. It's not that because your problem is so big that the solution must be big as well. It's not about that. It's that the problem in your eyes is big. But as soon as that big problem shrinks down, right, and becomes a small problem, it becomes more manageable. So I'm going to the next one here. When we starve health anxiety, take a good look at your life. I know right now, I know that there's two or three hours of stuff you do on a daily basis that is feeding your anxiety levels. That is feeding your anxiety levels. Two to three hours a day. TV, throw it out. What kind of music do you listen to? Replace it. What kind of friends do you hang out with? You become the top five people you hang out with the most in your life, by the way. Um, who are you mingling with online? What websites are you, are, you, are you going on? Is it helping? Is it helping? Is it giving you strategies? Is it, is it giving you tools? Is it giving you success stories? Um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, what places are you visiting on a daily basis? Are you going to shopping malls and being bombarded by marketing and advertising and all sorts of shit out there that's just fueling your anxiety? Why do you keep doing it, right? Everything, I mean, so much of our daily life is subconscious, is unconscious. We don't realize what we're doing. It's just these deeply embedded habits that we're just so used to doing that we continue to do them on a daily basis without even knowing that it's hurting us. So your job is to go, you know what? Here, I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna write 10 things that are right now affecting my anxiety levels. Here I go, one, two, three, four. And I'm going, oh my goodness, I never realized that all those things could be contributing to my anxiety. Boom, it's right there on paper, boom. By the way, you like my Himalayan salt lamp? I love it, and I haven't taken a sip out of my tea yet, that's okay. You guys are more important. Um, two identities. One, victim. Two, warrior. Right now, the scales are tipped this way. All right, that's victim, that's warrior. It's about 90-10. 
in order to get here and then here, we need to be truly aware of the attributes and the characteristics of both, okay? When you're a victim and you're talking about your anxiety and you're going on forums and you're going to the doctor every day to get the same tests, same checkups and such, um, talking to your mom, that's really not helping you, um, your brother, your sister, your husband, you know, um, that is the victim. Then there's the warrior. The warrior does things differently, thinks differently, acts differently, believes different things, right? hangs around different people, does different habits in their lives, that makes them a warrior. Now, if we look at these two, we'll notice that a lot of successful people today in the world are, this is the scale right here. It's not like they never get fearful thoughts. They do, but they're able to move past them because they know what fuels the victim side of them, right? And for us, to get to warrior and less of the victim, we need to write down the 10 characteristics of both. What would this person do, the victim side of you, and what would the warrior do? But how do you get in touch with the warrior? You get in touch with the warrior within you by recognizing that time in your life where you accomplished something huge, where you were like, you, you dived into something and you, and you put a, a strategy in place, you had the right mindset, and you went for it and you got it. You got that goal that you truly wanted in your life. You accomplished it. In that moment, you were warrior. Now, remember that time, okay? What were you thinking? What beliefs did you have? If fear popped up in that moment, how did you handle it? What kind of habits did you have on a daily basis? What kind of uh, things did you do on your leisure time? Did you watch TV and become stimulated? Probably not, right? Warrior is much different than victim. Check out both, okay? And guys, I can give you the screwdriver, as Gary Vee would say. Um, I can give you the tools, I can give you the mindsets, the strategies, but it's up to you to make it work. It's up to you, all right? screwdriver and so two to three hours on a daily basis back then take a good look at where your time is being spent guys the last thing I want to leave you with is the probably the most powerful thing and that is how willing what is your willingness to learn and what is your willingness to change right people go Dennis you know, I've tried this, I've tried that, nothing's ever worked in my life. Okay, well, have you had the talk with yourself and how willing are you to change and how willing are you to gain knowledge in order to change, right? Nothing, the road to recovery from health anxiety doesn't start until you've had a talk with yourself about those two things, until you've um, connected so much pain to your current situation and so much pleasure to your future self, the person you want to be, and you are actually willing to take in this knowledge, actually not questioning everything in your life, right? Is it working? Oh, that doesn't feel right. That, oh, that doesn't um, dwell, that doesn't link well with my beliefs and values. You know, you're in this situation because your beliefs and values suck. That's why you suffer from health anxiety. That's why. Because your beliefs and your values right now suck. The checklist that you have about everything in your life sucks. And that is why you continue to experience pain on a daily basis. Okay? So how willing are you to change and how willing are you to gain the knowledge to change? Guys, as you know, through the podcast, I don't sugarcoat stuff, we get to the point, and that is when change happens. The reason you are where you are is because people have sugarcoated everything in your life. Your friends tell you how things are going to be better tomorrow. Your, your father keeps telling you, you know what, back in my day, here's how he handled things. Well, guess what, Dad? I've got something completely different than you do. Health anxiety, if you don't know what it is, if you truly haven't read 10 books on health anxiety. If you haven't experienced it yourself, you have no idea. And therefore, it is very, very rare that you can actually help someone with health anxiety. 
I am leaving you guys with that. Remember, you are more than anxiety. Guys, head over to anxietyexit.com, start the program. I'll see you on the other side. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>